Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. On this episode, we have author and screenwriter Jane L. Rosen with us. Uh, Jane's second novel, Eliza Starts a Rumor, was optioned and is in development at NBC. Uh, Jane's novels uh, take inspiration from her real-life stories or real-life stories and interviews she does. Uh, Her first novel, Nine Women, One Dress, has been translated into 10 languages. And her latest novel, On Fire Island, was published in May. Welcome to Writers Group Therapy, Jane. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You know, we're, we are focus a lot on TV and film. Um, I know you're an author, but I'm just really excited about this. You have your first, your first book optioned with NBC, Eliza Starts a Rumor. It's in development with executive producers Wendy Stro- uh, Strocker-Hauser and Dana Honor, who worked on things like The Hands May Tale, Fresh Off the Boat, and Modern Family. I mean, those are some big names. How excited are you about that? I am, I am so excited. And I don't know if you know that I was a screenwriter before I was a novelist. Right. Mm -hmm. So this team of people that I'm working with on Eliza has just been phenomenal and so inclusive. So it's been a great experience. Why, why did you make the switch from screenwriting to novels actually? So a couple of years ago I was at an airport And someone's, you know, people come up to you all the time and say, I have a great idea for a story once they find out that you're a writer. And this happened and the person told me the story of a dress at Bloomingdale's that was covered, returned, covered in formaldehyde. And I just started, you know, my brain just started like pivoting in every direction possible about this dress. And I wrote my book, Nine Women, One Dress. The reason I wrote it as a book and not a script is that I was tired of writing things that no one saw but whoever I sold it to in Hollywood like in other words none of my scripts ever got made and I just felt if I write this as a book other people will read it except for my family and whatever producer I try and sell it to so I just went for it and I also realized that so many books are being adapted nowadays into movies that maybe this was a good chance for that to happen so and it worked because Hallmark they didn't make it but they bought it Well, it's funny because you went from screenwriting to novels to now back to screen. And it seems like um, Roshni can kind of relate to that as well, because she's a um, screenwriter, an actor who started writing her own novels. And hopefully they'll get turned into films someday. What was your actual impetus to start writing in the first place? Uh, How did you start screenwriting? Did you go to school for screenwriting? So I came up with an idea for a film. And then I had no idea how to write a screenplay because, of course, it's very unique. So I took a 10-week class at Gotham's Writer's Workshop in New York City. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, Just a real basic screenwriting class. I loved my professor. She was excellent. I wrote my script and I sold it to Miramax. It was like one of those, you know, beginner's luck kind of crazy stories. And it was very funny because I had a rude awakening afterwards when I saw that it was very difficult to sell a screenplay and get a screenplay made. So, um, yeah, at first it seemed like, wow, this is a piece of cake. But after that, it was a little more difficult. Oh, so you did have like the beginner's luck kind of thing and then had to hunker down after that. and Yeah, and do the rewrites and... You know, screenwriting and novel writing are so different when it comes to editing. I mean, when I was editing my first script that I sold to Miramax, I think it went back and forth with them like 30 times. And it would be a lot of like a lot of direction and then reverse direction. You know, like, could they meet when they're young? Okay, And then I would, you know, rewrite the script so that they meet when they're young. It was a rom-com. And then they, I turned it and they say, could they not meet when they're young? And I was like, all right. So it was a lot of like back and forth with a lot of people. When I wrote a novel, I had one editor and it was unbelievable. I just really enjoyed the back and forth seemed so much more productive than working with this entire team. So the differences 
you know, and also I got the first time I sold that script, I got fired, you know, after like 30 times they replaced me with another screenwriter. That doesn't happen in a novel. It's your novel. So there's a lot of differences. I was just going to ask what kind of genre did you write your scripts in? It sounds like it was still in the rom-com uh, realistic fiction type vein, which is what you're currently writing now, right? Yes. Very similar things. My last book on Fire Island, I wrote as a script first. Oh. So it's interesting because I have the script. Wow. So you're like, I'm ready to go, Hollywood. Here I we go. Know. <laughs> Except for one minor fact. I wrote the script. It's about three men and the baseball game and Fire Island. And it's a very like masculine kind of script. And since I write mostly for women, my editor who loved the story said she got to change this perspective. So mm -hmm. I ended up writing the book with the narrator being the dead wife of one of the protagonists. So that being said, I kind of would have to, to make it more towards the book, I'd have to rewrite the script and throw in this woman's narration, which would be fun and fine. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you did mention some of the the differences between, you know, screenwriting and novel writing. Did you take anything from the screenwriting process that helped you write your novels faster or more efficiently? Or were there just like too many pitfalls? Like I know, for example, when I wrote my first novel, poor Tom, he's my editor, it was too short because we're used to being concise, right? You know, in a screenplay. And he's like, oh my gosh, like there's no detail. So that was like my big pitfall. Like, did you notice anything where you're like, oh, I really got to change how I think about how I approach this? Yes. But I, I also found it to be a great like baseline. And so- First of all, when I wrote On Fire Island, I had the script, right? And just as you said, the script was like 90 pages. My book's 300 pages or something. So I had to, it was kind of just like having the best outline you've ever had. I had so much dialogue and I had this fantastic outline and I had to beef everything up and I had to add in that narrator, et cetera. But I do find the structure of a screenplay really helps me in writing a novel. And my arcs seem to be just because I've written so many screenplays, I know that that arc, the first act, the second act, the third round, it's a funny thing, but it does adapt nicely to my novel writing, even though I don't really pay that much attention to it. Like, in other words, I just start and it, my head works that way. You know, the beginning, the setup, the middle, the end, and it works. And I do credit the screenwriting for a lot of that. Also, I credit screenwriting for not caring about edits. Like, uh, you could throw anything at me and I'll be like, okay, I could do that, you know, which I think is a screenwriter's mentality. That's true. It goes through so many, so many revisions and so many, yeah, you really have to, you can't be precious with any of it. I was going to say, pantser or plotter? Well, a little of both. I, oh, okay. I was going to guess, both. I was going to guess outliner. So, all right. Yeah. So I'm you... not. I'm not very organized and I'm not a big outliner, but what I do is I take my story and I write on index cards, like nearly every chapter. And just to make sure I have the beginning, the middle, the end, you know, just what's going to happen here, what's going to happen here, what's going to happen here. And then I kind of never look at it again. And I'm right from the seat of my pants, but I know I have it. How about you? Oh, she's a pantser. I am a total pantser. Yeah, it, it it bites me in the butt when I'm working on my novels, for sure. Although I think I'm getting better about, like, having a clear path. But yeah, pantser all the way, as poor Tom knows. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little of both, too. I uh, It depends how I'm feeling at the moment. My next book, I really pantsed up, I'll tell you, if that's the, if that's the right expression. Really? I saw, yes. But my, why the change? <laughs> because I, I wrote um, a, uh, what is it? A synopsis to try and sell my next book with a great name called Seven Summer Weekends. Ooh. And my editor and her, you know, her editor, her boss, they loved the name Seven Summer Weekends. And they, but they really want, and they loved like the concept of going through seven weekends, but they wanted it set on Fire Island again. And so mm -hmm. I, sold this book based on the title 
And I just had to just, you know, start going. And somehow it worked out and it came out great, but it was really like, I didn't even know what I was doing. I, I turned it in and I said to my agent, we may have to give the advance back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like, I don't even know what happened here, but they loved it. And Good. I've hardly gotten any revisions on it. I'm going to finish it up, you know, the last re revisions next week. And it's really a fun rom-com set on Fire Island. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should be a pantser. <laughs> hey, if it works, you know, it works. I should right. try the outlining thing sometime. <laughs> please, please try this. <laughs> <laughs> I just kid. I kid. Roshni's books are fun. I like, I like reading them. I like editing them. Appreciate I see that. that other people have like I look at like Harley Fortune's Instagram and she takes like her manuscript and it has color coded like sticky notes on all the pages and I, I, different color. I have no idea what she has going on and I am so envious of these people that tackle things so perfectly meticulously. But in the end, you know, I end up with a book so. As long as you get there, you know, doesn't matter how. Right. <laughs> I wanted to ask about a shoe story. I actually read some of the, uh, some of the book. I haven't read the whole thing, but I, it starts off like with a gut wrenching, very real loss for the main character, Esme. Uh, I kind of want to say related to it, but as someone who has very senior parents, I sometimes find myself morbidly contemplating death. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not sure how I'll handle it when it when it happens, but it was interesting reading about her dealing with this event. Is is that something from a, a real life thing? How did you come up with something? So, I mean, it was really just uh, gut wrenching. I'm sorry, I gut wrenched you. Um, my dad died in an accident when I was 11. So I guess that all of that probably came right directly from that. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, sorry yeah. to hear that. That's okay. I mean, I'm much older now and I've gotten used to it. But I think that the Fire Island book is really better for preparing someone for death than um, Esme's story. I Not do. that we want to post, paint all your books in this <laughs> morbid light. <laughs> These They're are books morbid. extremely well written thing, uh, uh, books. Yeah, you've obviously touched on some serious. Uh, subjects it's it's interesting you know someone might mistake them for light summer beach reads but they're not i know it's such a toss-up i don't really know what people really want i think a lot of people do want the very light beach read i feel like my books have deeper meaning underneath but you're still parts of it are light and funny i mean i think on fire island is the funniest book that i've written even though it's told from a dead woman's perspective you know, so it's surprising. But A Shoe Story, I loved writing that book. It was great. And that whole journey, there's a journey in that book of a man named Cy. I don't know if you got that far, but his entire journey in the Coast Guard in World War II was my father's exact journey. And as I said, my dad died when I was an 11. So to go back, I went back and found his letters. I traced his boat, you know, his boat through um he was in normandy salerno and sicily all those invasions and uh it was really neat to go back and think like maybe you know what was he thinking at 17 years old invading normandy so that was a great treat to write that book kind of pivoting a little bit here this is more of a generic thing for our listeners so you mentioned working with your agent working with your editor can you kind of talk us through the process of like, how did you find an agent? How, how is it like working with one? How do you choose one? Cause you're with them for quite some time. Cause a, a book is a very long project. Yes. So this was kind of interesting. I had a, I have a friend who reads all my works, right. And she's an actress and she, I didn't know that her sister worked for Random House at the time. So I said, could you read this book, Nine Women, One Dress, that I wrote? She read it. She loved it. And I said, I just don't know what to do with it. And she said, let me ask my sister. She said, she works at Random House. And I was like, what? And she said, don't get excited. She never would take like an unsolicited manuscript. But she could tell me, she won't even read it, but she'll tell me what you should do with it. I said, okay. 
She read it. She loved it. And Random House wanted to buy it, Doubleday, wanted to buy it before I had an agent. So nothing makes it easier to get an agent than saying, hi, I've already sold this. <laughs> Could you run wow. <laughs> Yeah, really? <laughs> that is an awesome break. Oh, my gosh. It was. So when that happened, I had about three or four agents, like, wanting to represent me. It was crazy. You know, like, arguing back and forth. They'll pick me, pick me. It was really unbelievable. And I picked one agent. Good problem to have. It, right. I picked one agent, and she did a great job selling the book. And even that was already kind of sold, but then it didn't really work out. We really didn't gel in the end. I needed someone maybe a little more hands-on, um, someone who I could bounce things off of more, my ideas and all of that. And I found this woman, her name is Eve McSweeney. She's now with Chronic, Chronic, she just moved. Chronic, Chronograph, I think it's called. Um, anyway, she's fabulous. She was an old editor at Vogue and she really like, she'll just take my stuff and she'll read it in a timely manner and she'll give me great notes. And for me, that's very important in an agent, just having that, you know, partnership. So she's probably not like a killer, you know, (laughs) like people look for an agent that's a killer, but she's wonderful. So that's how I got my agent. I switched from the first one to the second one. And it was all very fortuitous and it was, it's good. But no that horror story. You, you, you got, you got fortunate that you didn't have any like you know, horrible problems with agents. So, Well, yeah. I mean, switching wasn't ideal. It was kind of a, a, a difficult thing. Uh, okay. But, you know, I don't want to really get into it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. And they like choose... Life. They choose your team, right? They choose your editor and they choose. An or editor you... really buys the book from you. So mm, okay. that agent sends it out to, let's say, 10 editors that she chooses that she thinks are looking and or may relate to this work compared to other work that they do and that they've edited before. And then if the editor bites and really loves it, she kind of sets up her team within from a publicist or marketing person and all of that. So mm. it's. It's a whole community effort. And from start to finish, it'd be what, maybe a year? A little bit less, yeah. depending? So like seven summer weekends, which I haven't even announced the title yet. Your listeners are the first to know. Ooh, um, exclusive. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, I started that in September. Okay. And I just, I will turn in my last draft in September, in this September. So that's a year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Very and it's cool. really fun because you get to pick out the cover and the, you even get to pick out the person who speaks it in the um, audio copy. So, which is also different than screenwriting also, because of course you have nothing to do with anything after you turn in that script. You know, no one's asking you what the movie poster should look like. <laughs> yeah right you know that's actually really fascinating you say that because i i narrate audiobooks and when i work with a publisher i never know if the author is picking me or if like because sometimes the authors like tells me later they're like oh i'm finally listening to it now i'm like do they have a say in it so it's interesting to know that yes you do have a say in it that's awesome they give you like three let's say uh, three women in my case because it was a female narrator mm-hmm. and they read the same paragraph and they do some voices and some dialogue and you sit and listen and you choose. But it's funny because it's not like that's my talent to choose something like that. Right. You know, and or it's not nor is it my talent to pick a cover. But the author's very involved in those things. I mean, I think when you know, you know, it resonates with you. You know, you know what you like. So that's good. That's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. But also sometimes I think maybe I picked the wrong cover and maybe it's better to let the people that know what they're doing, you know, do it. I'm not sure. Now, when you get to the, the, the screenwriting side of it, the television side with Eliza starts a rumor, obviously, you know, you, you started as a screenwriter, became an author. Now you're, you're optioning your book to be a script. Are you involved in the screenwriting process? Are you going to be involved in the development process of the show? So, the this woman Dana Honor, the producer, and so Wendy Stryker Hauser is writing 
Eliza starts a rumor and she's amazing. But the interesting thing is when I sold my first book to Hallmark, I never heard from them again. And then they'd come back and they re-optioned it and they said things like they were having trouble writing the script. And I said, I could help, but I never heard from them again. In this situation with Eliza, I'm being completely told, you know, kept abreast of everything that's going on. I've been reading edits of the script and it's been a wonderful experience, very inclusive. So will I really have a lot to do with it? Not much, but I'm able to say, you know, uh, this just, this part doesn't seem right, or this is fantastic. I could give my opinion, but. So you have, do you not have a desire to write for television? Well, I had no desire to write Elias, Eliza starts a rumor and it wasn't offered for me to write it because I really wanted it. I've written one pilot, but I'm not a television writer and it's a very different art, you know, Mm -hmm. with on fire Island, I've said from the beginning, I really don't want anyone else to write it. I would write with someone, but that, that one particular book is so close to my heart. I wouldn't feel great about things being changed that much. Well, so, would, F- would Fire Island be done as a film or as a, a series? So in my heart, I always wanted it to be a film because that's how it started out. And there are a lot of actors and directors that live here on Fire Island. So I'm hoping someone's going to take a bite at that. But the same person, Dane Honor, wants to make Fire Island into a television show. So I really, I mean, there's a strike now, as we all know, so I don't have to make any decisions now, but I'm like weighing the options. And some, when she talks to me about it, it's very convincing because On Fire Island takes you to Sicily. It takes you to Hawaii. Like there are a lot of things that could be accomplished in, on te- in television that would really not be accomplished in the film. But, you know, in my heart of hearts, I'd rather it be a film. But the other things, I don't care. Like, I'll give them to someone else. And if I believe in them, they could run with it. And it's all good. Cool. Yeah. I actually have a question. Yes. Who would your dream cast be? For For Fire Island? For Fire Island, yeah. Okay. Have you read it? I read the synopsis. I'm still working through it. Okay. No, I'm just asking because, so Shep is the one that everyone like falls in love with. Shep is an 80 year old grumpy baseball playing guy. And that has been in my head. I have like huge dreams about Shep. And the first one was Alan Arkin, which obviously, oh, I know he would have been. Oh, so he's, a, oh yeah. Oh, okay. He's gone. Um, and then like, I just read that Robert Redford is like 87 yesterday. <laughs> he would have been great too. Um, I'm not really sure who Shep would be. Someone fabulous. Hmm. I always liked Ed O'Neill from uh, Modern Family and um, Married with Children. Oh, that's a great choice for Shep. Never thought of that. Yeah. Huh. I think and he then, even likes baseball too. So Does he? <laughs> yeah. I'll have to get it to him. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I have, I my ideas are just weird with that one. I don't know what would end up happening. I did do some cast on it for someone um i can't even remember who i picked I, who would you pick i don't know i'm stuck on alan arkin because i'm like who is like him oh my gosh no, no one's like him so that's over oh. dustin hoffman ah mm-hmm. really huh he could be like alan arkin in that way i don't know i'm Bill <laughs> Murray would be a great chef too Mm. I actually gave it to Bill Murray years ago. I was sitting in my living room, looking out the window when it was just a script, when I didn't have it as a book. And I looked down and Bill Murray is filming a movie on the corner. So I I lived in a walk up. I ran upstairs. I grabbed the script. I ran down all the stairs. (laughs) Oh my word. The street. And by then he was sitting in a car, right? Yeah. It was a car with like other cast members. I guess it was just like, place to hang i knocked on the window and they rolled down the window and i was holding a script they may have thought i worked for the crew you know whatever (laughs) (laughs) i said you want to hear the craziest thing i wrote this script with you in mind for this part and and then i looked out the window and there you are standing there and so i brought you down a copy and he goes to me it's not the craziest thing 
I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, touche. It's not the craziest thing, but would you like to read it? He's like, sure. And I gave it to him through the window. And then I ran back upstairs and stared out the window. And we saw him reading it a little bit. And Oh, my word. Wow. It was really funny. But of course, you know, I never heard from him again. But it was pretty, really, it was a great hysterical story. Oh, that's that, awesome. That's yeah. Well, who cool. knows? Maybe it'll come back around and he'll be like, hey, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll read the book and I'll be like, I read a little bit of this before. <laughs> that's so we'll awesome. See. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And also been thinking about Tim Tim Robbins because he was um, mm -hmm. in both Durham as a baseball player. Like, that's why I was thinking of Robert Redford, The Natural. I've been thinking about, you know, the guy, the, he has to have some love for baseball because you can't teach someone to hit a baseball for the first time at that age you know we have to have somebody that's athletic mm. cool yeah. but there's a lot of characters in that book to cast so you mentioned uh you mentioned the book you're finishing up now what's next on your plate after that i am not sure i i I'm turning in another proposal next week. Um, I mean, no one even knows this yet, but it's a book called 1985. Hmm. And it takes place in 1985. So we'll see. We'll see what they say. I don't want to get myself too excited about oh, okay. it. I really do love the book, but they could say, no, we want you to write 1967. And then I'll, <laughs> then I'll no, I'm only kidding, but I, we'll see what happens. Cool. Well, good luck yeah. with that. If people want to find out more about you and uh, reach out to you, where can they do that? How can they find I you? I have a website. It would be nice to know what it's called. JaneLRosen.com. It's pretty easy. That's pretty straightforward, um, yeah. Yes. And I am always on Instagram. I'm on Instagram too much. You could always find me there, Jane L. Rosen. I respond to whatever you DM me. I'll respond. And um, yeah, I do a lot of chatting on the dms of instagram so feel free to reach out to me there and follow me there and see everything that's going on all my book talks and all of whatnot well awesome everyone make sure you check out jane l rosen's website and her instagram read on fire island and if you want to follow us we are at wg therapy on instagram and i think it's called x now and writers group therapy online and we will see you in a few weeks